All right, good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to the seventh and final meeting of the World Radio Communication Conference Advisory Committee for 2019. Um, uh, just a heads up, we are expecting uh, one guest speaker. Chairman Pai should be down momentarily. We will pivot uh, from the agenda when he gets here to uh, accommodate his schedule, of course. Um, we have 21 uh, recommendations, 21 documents uh, this morning. And uh, once we get through all of those, that means we will have uh, the, uh, the committee will have made recommendations on every WARC uh, 19 agenda item, which is uh, terrific. So let's get uh, started. Uh, Chris, any uh, first comments? Uh, no, I'm good to go. Thanks. Great. Thanks, everyone, again, for being here, and thanks for all your hard work. Uh, remember, for members, when you do speak, uh, please remember to identify yourself and, uh, and who you represent. And when we get to the working groups, um, uh, when you make your presentations, we'll follow the format of just give us a summary of the work that's been done since the last meeting, uh, and then we'll seek comments, and then we'll introduce each document uh, one by one and get approval of those. Uh, we will start by uh, uh, reviewing the agenda uh, for today's meeting. That is document 76. Uh, are there any concerns or objections to the agenda? And if not, we will uh, deem the agenda approved. And now uh, moving to the minutes of the sixth meeting, that is document number 75. Any uh, concerns or objections, questions on the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Mr. Murphy. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, NTIA to come up and provide any uh, updates on the radio conference uh, subcommittee. Is anyone from NTIA here? Okay. Um, let's move on then to IWG1. Uh, Joe uh, Kramer, uh, Chair, do you have a report for us, please? <coughs> Thank you, Chairman Power, Vice Chairman Murphy, Mr. Mullenix, you guys. Um, IWG-1 is responsible for maritime, aeronautical, and radar services. We like to call it MARS. Our group met two times since the last meeting, and as you know, a lot has happened since then with the CPM going on and other meetings as such. And as a result, we have for your consideration today five documents. Um, I see we have a lot of documents today overall, so I'll try to be as brief as possible when, we, when I introduce my documents. But I see we have somebody else here, so why don't I put my document submission on hold and uh, turn the microphone over back to you for a minute. Thank you, Joe. Um, uh, Chairman Pai, welcome. Uh, I had just... Uh, 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 updated the crowd here that based on 21 new documents uh, presenting, presented today, we will have recommendations on all the work, 19 items by the end of today's meeting. And uh, that is thanks to the people you see here and thanks to a lot of people you don't see. And of course, uh, thanks to your great staff and uh, Mike here and uh, your colleagues on the eighth floor. We really appreciate all of your efforts and your leadership because we know that in this, in this building and in the interagency process and on the ITU stage, your leadership has really been paying dividends and will continue to do so. So thank you for your efforts and I'll turn it over to you. Well, th thanks so much, Tom, for that kind introduction and uh, to all of you for being here for the extensive work you've done over the last several months. Um, what did President Kennedy say? We choose this mission not because it is easy, but because it is hard, and that very much reflects our deliberations. Uh, of course, as this is the last meeting of the WAC, I uh, wanted to thank you for all the hard work over the uh, past three years. And speaking of the complex issues at the uh, WRC, I have to say that I am frankly just in awe of the work that the advisory committee has done over the past two years in particular. Uh, your tremendous commitment to tackling the uh, tough issues has enabled the WAC to submit, as I understand it, close to 100 recommendations to the FCC on uh, WRC preliminary views and proposals for the upcoming conference in Sharm el-Sheikh. And these recommendations, as you know, have formed the basis for nearly all of the U.S. proposals to submitted to CTEL thus far, as well as some regional agreements with our CTEL partners. Following today's meeting, the FCC will have received proposed recommendations from the WAC for nearly every item on the comprehensive WRC 19 agenda. 
And these proposals cover a very wide range of issues, including 5G, advanced satellite services, uh, IoT, modernizing aeronautical and maritime services, and setting the stage for the agenda of the next WRC in 2023, and since we have so much free time on our hands. Uh, clearly, U.S. leadership in 5G and all advanced communication services wouldn't be possible without the commitment that you have shown to the effort through uh, this WAC. And so I would like to acknowledge in particular the dedicated leadership of the FCC's WRC team, uh, Dante Ibera, Mike Mullenix, uh, Tom Sullivan, the chief of the bureau, uh, Neshe Gundelsberger, and so many others. Uh, uh, and to also thank the WAC leadership, our distinguished, uh, indefatigable, and uh, quite humorous uh, chairman, Tom Power, from CTIA, uh, the vice chair, Chris Murphy. I'm sure he's funny as well. I don't need to <laughs> detract from, uh, I try. I try. <laughs> from his uh, uh, abilities uh, to generate a laugh, but uh, as well as the chairs and the vice chairs of the informal working groups. And I know that the bulk of the uh, legwork in developing these recommendations occurs in these informal working groups. But I understand there's something like 300 hours of informal working group meetings scheduled during the uh, this WAC cycle, which is no small beans. And so that is true commitment, and it is commitment that ultimately will be for a major purpose. Uh, this is an incremental uh, series of efforts that will lead us hopefully to a very successful World Radio Communication Conference uh, later this year in Egypt. And so I want to thank you again for all your deliberations. Thank you for letting me intrude upon uh, your process, and uh, wish you a very happy and productive March 11th. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll turn it back over to Joe. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, Chairman Pai, for, for coming down and giving us those uh, uh, warm words. So as I mentioned before, we have for your, your consideration today five documents. I see. Well, again, we have a lot of documents, so I'll do this as quickly as possible. The first one, WAC document 77, is on agenda item 1.8, issue A, and it's to consider possible regulatory actions to support the global maritime distress and safety systems, uh, GMDSS, you'll hear that a few times today, its modernization, and to support the introduction of additional satellite systems into the GMDS in accordance with resolution 359. Uh, the proposal for you today uh, reflects the method for which the U.S. prefers in the CPM text under this agenda item. Um, I'd like to point out a slight error that was found by Mr. Jansky. Uh, in the third line of the introduction, it says, in this chapter. It should say, in this resolution, kind of editorial, but fairly important editorial, so I wanted to bring it up. And with that brief introduction, I present the document for your consideration. Okay, thanks, Joe. I'm just going to go back and ask, first of all, if there are any questions oh. about Joe's report, which was very brief. Um, I don't see any. Um, I also want to um, uh, acknowledge that um, uh, the RCS uh, agenda a proposal on agenda item 9.1.4 dealing with um, uh, suborbital vehicles. Um, um, that RCS has concurred with that uh, proposal. Um, so let's move again back to um, the um, uh, document um, uh, 77. Uh, are there any comments on <coughs> document 77? Seeing none, um, I seek the meeting's approval. Any objections? <coughs> document 77 is approved. Great. Thank you. The, um, my second proposal from IWG1 is WAC document 78, and it deals with agenda item 1.9.1, which deals with regulatory actions within the frequency band 156 to 162.05 megahertz, and this is for autonomous maritime radio devices, AMRD and it's to protect the GMDSS and Automatic Identification Systems, AIS, in accordance with Resolution 362. Uh, this proposal, it essentially allows the operation of um, autonomous maritime radio devices uh, that support the AIS, and with that, I'm gonna submit the proposal for your review, at, pending if there are no questions. 
Any comments on document 78? Any objections to approval? Documents approved. Great. Thank you very much. My the third proposal is found in WAC document 79 and it pertains to agenda item 1.9.2. It's a very long agenda item title, so I won't read it for you all. But essentially, the, it's a proposal that provides new allocations to enable the satellite component, meaning the maritime mobile satellite service of VHF data exchange system. Um, and with that brief introduction, and if there are no questions, I submit that document for your consideration. Any comments on document 79? Seeing none, any objections to approval? Documents approved. Great. Thank you very much. My fourth proposal was going to be the suborbital vehicle oh. edits to the NTIA proposal, uh, but since they agreed with what we changed, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. My next document and my last document reflects a submission that came to our group the, the evening before our last meeting and it pertains to updating appendices 26 and 27 to enable wider HF channels for aeronautical uses. Uh, the document received general support in the meeting uh, given the claims that it's not intended to impact maritime or other HF uses, uses or change Article 5. Um, however, given its late submittal, it's offered for WAC usage in discussions with NTIA on the topic as well as uh, I presume it will be submitted into the U.S. work process and or CTEL processes uh, as we go forward in developing Agenda Item 10 proposals, but I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Okay. Uh, any comments on Document 81? Um, as this was, uh, we'll, we'll note this document um, and it'll be made available for further comment through the public notice process. Great job. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, uh, for Agenda Item 10, uh, issue dealing with suborbital vehicles. Yep. Um, just going back to that, what, what Chris highlighted was on agenda item issue 9.1.4 that the WAC endorsed the RCS version without any further modification. However, we still need to introduce WAC 80. Thank you very much then. So my new fifth proposal will be edits that industry made to the NTIA proposal for agenda item 10 for suborbital vehicles. I apologize, my fault, nine dot, not 9.1.4. Um, are of note, I wanted to make with respect to the suborbital vehicles within the industry proposal is that no change to Article 5 is proposed um, in our submission to the WAC. And I guess with that short intro, I'll submit that for consideration. Any comments? Are we noting this or? I thought that was approved. Uh, okay, approved. Uh, just one last thing, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in IWG1, uh, th especially those who contributed documents and, uh, and helped with the discussions over the past couple of years. I do would like to call out Bob Denny with NTIA, who graciously provided updates from Working Party 5B meetings on the issues under IWG1's uh, purview, and sometimes he did so not knowing he would be doing so ahead of time. So. Um, that's why I want to thank him now. And also I want to thank, you know, Mike, Dante, Alan, Lewis, um, Larry Olson also with the FCC in helping us uh, go through sometimes the arduous process of getting everything together. So with that, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for all your work. Uh, we will move to working group two and uh, Jane Stankavich to present the report and the items. Thank you. And uh, IWG3 met three times since the last WAC meeting. Three. Two. Three. I begged her to defer DFO. Three. <laughs> three times since the last WAC meeting. And we finalized the, uh, <laughs> I'll show them the dates later, don't worry. You said working group three. Oh. IWG2 <laughs> met three times. <laughs> 
Presenting for one group two will be Jane Stankavitz. Jane, please, uh, would you like to begin your presentation? That's what happens when you take too many red eyes. So IWG three met three. <laughs> IWG two met three times since the last uh, last WAC meeting. We finalized the remaining bands under 113 agenda item 113, and we have one IW uh, agenda item 10 future agenda item for consideration today. Any uh, comments on uh, Jane's report? Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we move to the uh, individual documents. All right, uh, so under agenda item 113, which is on the consideration of identification for IMT, we have in WAC document 82, a view A, view B proposal, as we were unable to come to consensus, and this pertains to the 45.5 to 47.2 gigahertz bands. Uh, view A supports an identification to IMT, and view, view B is for a no change. Uh, so. Although we have not come to consensus, we do have document 82 with both, both views for consideration. Any uh, comments or objections to approval of document 82? Hearing none, it is approved. All right, the second document is document WAC 083, and this is also for agenda item 113 with respect to the 50.4 to 52.6 gigahertz bands. And similarly, we were unable to reach consensus. View A represents an identification for IMT, and view B seeks a no change. Any comments on uh, document 83? Any objections? It is approved. And now for a change of pace, we actually have an agreed one. Uh, WAC 84 is uh, with respect to the 71 to 76 gigahertz bands and 81 to 86 gigahertz bands, and it is seeking a no change uh, to those bands in document 84. Any comments or objections? Hearing none, uh, document 84 is approved. And just because we did have one for consensus, we decided to add one that we just have progress to note. Um, in document 85, there was a future agenda item proposal for ENG, electronic news gathering. Uh, the, we had two revisions, so we considered it at three meetings. There were some concerns noted. Uh, the major concerns were the range uh, from 150 megahertz to two gigahertz. Uh, whether or not we need to have a future agenda item given that it could potentially be under a, re a recommendation or a report, and then whether this would meet the threshold as a U.S. priority given uh, the many different competing agenda items that we'll be uh, looking at for work 23. So this item not having been agreed uh, at the working group level, we will just note it here and it will be subject to further comment in the public notice. Okay, and then just, uh, I won't take over IWG3. Uh, I'll, leave, <laughs> I'll leave that for Zach. <laughs> Zach. Zach's giving up already. Um, but I did want to thank all the members. Um, we do have our uh, former vice chair, Tricia Pauletta, in, in the audience, so I thank her for her work. And all the members, um, we, we developed 105 documents and 28 meetings. And I don't know many, I don't know, most of them arduous maybe all, and many offlines, but I do thank all the members for their spirit of cooperation and professionalism in some very difficult discussions. Great, and thank you, uh, Jane, for your uh, leadership of the group. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Zach Rosenbaum to come up and uh, present for the real IWG3. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Um, so yes, for IWG3, we had four meetings since the last uh, WAC meeting in October. Uh, and we were presented with nine documents, two of which we reached consensus for, and seven uh, documents where we were not able to reach consensus. Uh, three of the documents are for agenda items uh, for WRC19, and six documents are for future agenda items uh, to be considered at the next WRC. Uh, and before I introduce documents. Uh, Any comments on Zach's report? Okay, let's go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so WAC document 86 is for agenda item 1.2, and this considers in-band power limits for earth stations operating with the MSS, METSATs, EESS, and around the, the 400 megahertz band uh, in accordance with resolution 765. Uh, and this document, I believe, was, this is a new proposal coming from IWG3 into the WAC. Any comments on document 86? Any objections to approval? Approved. Thank you. Uh, the next document is WAC document 87. Uh, this document was a modification to an NTIA proposal uh, where we show our edits to agenda item 1.3, which is to consider possible upgrading uh, from a secondary allocation of the METSAT and a primary status 
uh, to primary status and a possible primary allocation to the ESS uh, in the 460 to 470 in accordance with resolution 766. Any comments on document 87? Any objections to approval? Approved. Thank you. So the next document is WAC document 88. This document uh, is a proposal uh, under agenda item 9, issue 9.1.9, uh, for its studies related to possible spectrum um, needs and possible allocations, sorry, and the frequency band 51.4 to 52.4. We were unable to reach consensus uh, for this document, so we would just uh, hand it to the WAC for noting. Any comments on document 88? Uh, there was not consensus uh, at the IWG level on this, so we're noting it here, and it'll be available for public notice, on, uh, for comment at, on the public notice. Thank you. So the next uh, six documents are for agenda item 10. Uh, these documents, We'll just take them in order, but again, these will be noted uh, for the WAC and, and out for public uh, public notice comment. So WAC document 89 is to introduce uh, or to study NGSO to GSO links in the KA band and QV band uh, between uh, GSO satellites and NGSO satellites in the uh, Earth to space direction. Any comments on document 89? Okay, this document was not agreed in the IWG, so we will um, note it here, and then it'll be available for further comment in the public notice. Thank you. So next document is WAC uh, document number 90. Uh, this is uh, to study a possible FSS allocation in the Earth to space direction in the 37.5 to 39.5. This uh, agenda item, or this proposal, was brought into the WRC 15 for study at WC 23, and so we're sort of just looking at it again now to put it on the agenda, but again, just noted for the WAC. Again, noting any comments, be available in the public notice for comment. Thank you. So the next document is WAC document number 91. Uh, this is to study a possible uh, use of the FSS uh, for GSO eSIMs, Earth stations uh, in motion in the 10.7 to 10.95, 11.2 to 11.45, and 12.75 to 13.25, which are the Appendix 30B bands. Again, noting it for the WAC. Any comments on document 91? Noted. Um, comments available in the public notice process. Thank you. Next document is WAC document number 92. This uh, proposes to study NGSO operations below 20,000 kilometers in the 186 to 18.8. Uh, again, this is noted for the WAC. Thank you. Any comments? Noted. Thank you. Uh, next document is WAC document 93. Uh, this considers NGSO eSIMs in the K band and Q and V band. Um, to introduce NGSO eSIMs where we are currently studying GSO eSIMs and 1.5. This looks to study the same frequency bands in addition to some uh, higher bands uh, for eSIMs operating on NGSO satellites. Noted for the WAC. Any comments on document 93? Okay, thank you, noted. Thank you, and the last document is WAC document number 94. Uh, this is proposing to identify sharing regime between GSO and NGSO satellites and the E-band or 71.6 to 81, sorry, 71 to 76 gigahertz and 81 to 86 gigahertz uh, for the sharing regime between GSO and NGSO satellites. Any comments on document 94? Okay, noted and available for comment in the public notice process. And that concludes all my documents. I would like to also thank the IWG3 participants for all their hard work and uh, to the FCC for all their guidance and support throughout the process. Thank you. And thank you, Zach, for your uh, leadership of the group. And uh, we'll turn now to working group four and Jennifer Manor. So um, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'm happy to report since October, we've had four meetings as well since the last WAC meeting. And we've, um, I think, done a pretty good job at finishing our work. So with that, I'd like to present three items for your consideration. Any comments uh, before we turn to the items? All right. So um, the first item is on agenda item seven, issue F, measures to facilitate entering new assignments into the radio regulations appendix 30B list. It's WAC document 95. Any comments or objections to approval? 
All right. Uh, document 95 is approved. The second document is WAC 96, which deals with agenda <coughs> item 7, issue H, but actually reflects the output of discussions on issues H, I, and L that were supported by the U.S. delegation at CPM. It should be viewed as a replacement for the NTIA proposal on agenda item 7, issues H and I, largely because of what happened at the CPM. So with that, I'd like to present that to you. Mr. Great. Any comments on uh, document 96? Any objections to its approval? Hearing none, it is approved. And the last document, WAC 97, I believe, is just for noting. It's a, um, a document prepared by NTIA on passive service interference reporting. We did provide in this document text improvements, but we would like to flag in, the, in our minutes from our last meeting that, that our minutes address concerns for consideration during the reconciliation process. Great. Any comments on uh, document 97? As Jennifer said, we'll be noting this one and we'll be seeking uh, comment on it in the public notice. So with that, I think we've finished our work. So I'd like to thank my vice chair, Steve Baruch, who hopefully is watching on TV. Um, and, and of course, the members of the group and the FCC, especially Michael, for supporting us in all our work, and as well as you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you for your uh, leadership of your working group. Uh, that is the uh, conclusion of the presentations from the working groups. I would direct your attention to document four, which is the WARC 19 preparatory timeline, so you can see uh, what's coming as we uh, hit the crunch time. Uh, is there any other business, anyone uh, who wants to uh, take the microphone for any questions or comments? I think Mike does. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, First, I want to acknowledge that the public notice process this time will be a bit more abbreviated. Normally it's two weeks. This time it will be only one week. Uh, after coordination with the bureaus and offices later today, the FCC will be issuing a public notice with a comment deadline of this Friday. This expeditious pace is necessary to reach um, consensus in the reconciliation process with the NTIA in order to meet the March 18th and March 25th deadline for CTEL, for the CTEL limit meeting. So it will be a bit of a sprint to get there. Uh, unfortunately, the CPM gave us a little wrinkle in our scheduling. scheduling. Um, so any comments on that component of it? Uh, I will acknowledge that the FCC's priority is getting out the agenda item proposals for WRC 19, and we'll look more focused on the WRC 23 agenda items as we move towards the August meeting in Ottawa. Um, before thanking everyone for all their outstanding work, I wanted to acknowledge how successful this WAC has been. We've had the largest WAC that we've ever had with over 50 member companies, member representatives, and we have, for the first time ever, received recommendations and proposals on every single agenda item, totaling, as the chairman said, nearly 100 recommendations. Uh, upon the hours and hours of teleconferences, we've had 83 informal working group meetings. Uh, which collectively led us to a number of inter-American proposals at CTEL and will ultimately ensure our success in Egypt in six to seven months from now. I uh, would like to thank each of the IWG, IWG chairs for all their hours on teleconferences, reviewing documents, putting them in the, the proper format. Uh, it's an arduous task and our staff of the IWG chairs and vice chairs are the best that we can find in this business. Uh, starting with IWG-1, Joe Kramer and Catherine Martin led the Maritime Aeronautical and Radar Service Group. Their years of experience, knowledge, cool heads led to a number of consensus proposals on every single issue. Uh, IWG-2 was a little bit different. There weren't a lot of <laughs> consensus uh, proposals brought to us, <coughs> sometimes not even consensus of what the group's t name is. But uh, I wanted to <laughs> thank Jane and Tricia for the number of view A, view B, view C, view D proposals that were brought to us. Um, you gave the FCC a lot to chew on so that we knew really which way the industry was going and we were able to reach a lot of US proposals out of that process, so it was very helpful. Um, IWG3, led by Jack Wangernick and also Giselle Creaser and finally by Zach Rosenbaum, uh, a slate of GSO to NGSO experts really pushed the fold forward for advanced satellite communications um, and uh, growing NG NGSO constellations, eSIMs, and small sets. So thank you all for your efforts. 
Uh, last but not least, IWG4 was led by two of the, the best regulatory experts we have, Jennifer Manner and Steve Baruch, who navigated many of the most intri intricate uh, agenda items, including Agenda Item 7, which is a conference into itself. Um, of course, we have to thank Tom Power and Chris Murphy, who I've enjoyed working with both of you through this process. Um, at the beginning, I don't know if you're familiar with all these acronyms that we're dealing with, <laughs> but they're all second page now. You both are champions in your respective industries, and at least from an FCC perspective, it's nice to see the satellite and terrestrial bodies working so well together. Um, look at this. Can we solve a few of these UAVBs that you just gave us? Um, and last but certainly not least, I wanted to thank Ron Marcello, who's at the end of this table. Uh, he is an outstanding federal employee. Uh, every public notice that you've read, every membership request, every document that's posted to the website has gone through his hands. So I really appreciate all the help that he's given me through this process. Um, and I look forward to working with all of you, hopefully, as you join the WRC delegation to Egypt. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, let me just echo Mike's comments uh, uh, all around, especially uh, great thanks to all the members of the, uh, of the working groups. I know it's uh, been a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of non-glamorous activities to go along with, uh, well, maybe, maybe not any glamorous parts of it, but, uh, but your efforts are really, really appreciated. Uh, I know it's, it's uh, been a sacrifice and, uh, and we do appreciate it. Uh, and of course, a special thanks to the working group chairs uh, for their leadership. Uh, Ron and Dante, uh, thank you so much for your efforts, and uh, a special special thanks to to Mike. Uh, I think we barely knew each other when this started, but he has this been vital uh, to this whole process. I think you all know that. Uh, I think there's a view A that uh, he's our MVP, and there better not be a view B because uh, he's the guy that has really made this work. So thank you very much, Mike, and uh, and thank you to my co-chair uh, Chris. Uh, I really appreciate and uh, enjoyed working with you and. Uh, I think we'll keep working together in some uh, some context as we, as we move forward. And uh, let me turn it over to you for the last word. Okay, thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Um, uh, I don't have anything to add to what Tom said, really, other than um, I think a lot of the issues we've dealt with over this 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 committee may not uh, look like there's a lot of uh, uh, challenging issues, but in the the real work is done in the IWGs, and uh, people uh, work very very hard there. They're very passionate. They work very hard for their uh, companies, their clients, for the American public. And uh, I think a lot of the, um, the, the fact that we're able to get to this meeting and, and things have either been worked out or people are um, able to discuss their uh, differences um, in, a, in a civil uh, uh, manner and go through the processes. Uh, acknowledges the fact that the processes are there to get your uh, opinions expressed, get the best ideas before the FCC, and that this, this process that the FCC has for the industry really is a, a great um, uh, avenue for getting industry's views before the United States government. So thank you for all your hard work over the last several years. Uh, some of it was difficult, but I think um, it will make for a much better um, representation of the United States when we get to the WRC. So thank you, everybody, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to um, be the vice chair of this committee. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations.